Okay, so for this talk, it's very important that everyone can hear me. Not, also, not only uh, what, I'm, what I'm telling you through the microphone, but also what I'm playing on my guitar. So I'm just playing a simple chord right now and hope that everyone can hear it. Can somebody please confirm, confirm this? Yes, we can perfectly hear you. Thank you, Hannah. Great. Thanks for, thanks for testing this out with me. So um, I guess the only part of me that you're able to see right now is my face. But I've also brought my Ibanez electric guitar, as you can see. But it's, it's sliding out of frame right now. Sorry about that. But I can assure you that you will hear plenty of it in the next 30 minutes. So thank you, Sana, for the introduction. My name is Hanno. And the talk I will be giving today is essentially about two of my most favorite hobbies. The first one is making music. The second one is developing software. And although these two fields seem like two very different things, they are actually more alike than you might think. Consider this list of verbs, for example. Now I can associate all of them with software very easily. I mean, I can create software, I can develop software, I can program software, I can craft my software, I can write it, I can publish it, I can produce it, and when it's done, I can run it. But these verbs all, all go very well with music because I can create music, I can develop music, I can program music. Essentially, when you're a DJ, you're programming your music. There's a kind of a pattern in it. I can craft my music, I can write it, I can publish it, I can produce it. And when I go out for my morning run, I need my running music because that's a 165 beats per minute mix. So um, what does this tell me? Well, it actually tells me that um, music and software are alike because in order to produce it, you need creativity. Um, and I think musicians and the software developers, they are not factory workers who just do a tiny part of a conveyor belt process or who do the same task over and over again. I think it's on the contrary. Uh, both musicians and software developers are craftspeople. They like to shape their products. They like to sculpt their projects until they are happy with it. And um, you only allow yourself to stop working on it once you're happy with it. And most of the time this can, this can take quite a long time. So I think I've mentioned already uh, that music and software are two favorite hobbies of mine. Now I have managed to turn one of these hobbies into a career. And during this talk, you can make up your mind about which hobby is my career and which is not, you know, after you've heard the music and after you've seen the software. I guess the bottom line is I love it when music and software come together right now over me now and each time it happens i feel like the happiest person on earth so in what ways do i see music and software come together i can think of a number of ways actually so let's demonstrate one possible way with a code example i came across this code example on twitter some time ago and it immediately made me very happy in fact, being a musician, I literally can't stop myself from singing along. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see. I'm just a poor boy, I need no sympathy because I'm easy come, easy go, a little high, little low. Anyway, the wind blows, doesn't really matter to me, to me. Uh, now, this conference may uh, have planned this talk as a regular conference session, but I've done this talk before in, a, in a, another conference, and they call it a lightning talk because it's a short version of this one. 
And this talk type of name is another reason why the previous song, the Queen song, is appropriate because of the following part. Thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo, Galileo. I'm not going to sing the whole song, but I think you know it, right? Um, on that note, here is another hit that I encountered on Twitter. Hey Jude, your make is bad. You should fix that compiler error. Remember to let it search the root path. Then you can start to make it better. Better, better, better. Everyone laugh. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to you people. Uh, but if this was a physical conference, uh, you would not... Um, I, I would force you to sing it with me. <laughs> so you're in luck this time. Um, well, of course it could be that you simply hate the Beatles or you hate this kind of music genre. I can do another genre if you want. Do, do class, do class if. Do, do class, do class. Do, do class, do class if, do class if, do class if the fall, do class if the fall. The class if the fault long this import abstracts This do in break native public Try if war for private static While While well, I have to admit this is a very geeky one I mean why, why should we mess with the lyrics at all? The, the original lyrics were fine and surely tons of popular songs can be applied to software engineering already without altering anything. So let's just embark on a small musical journey throughout the typical software development process. Why? Because I think it will be fun, because we're here anyway, and because it, because it makes me very happy. And who knows, maybe we will discover loads of songs that have been misinterpreted by the masses for years because Everyone seems to think that in the end, all songs are about love. Ew, you know what? <laughs> These people are all wrong because all songs are actually about software development. Yes, all of them. So let's start our musical journey. And of course, a typical software development process starts with gathering requirements. Now, whenever a product owner comes to me with some requirements, my music addicted brain immediately goes, hey, slow it down. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Yeah, I'm afraid. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Now requirements, they are very rarely immediately clear. I mean, I mean, not after the product owner has explained them just once. Uh, most of the time we have, as a developer, we have lots of questions, right? So in a lot of cases, the requirements need to be refined, right? And in general, I'm really eager for some refinement work. Why do you ask? Well, because it makes me very happy to sing to my product owner. Just don't give up. It out. Which is so appropriate. I love it. And it's driving my product owner insane. So that's a, that's a win. Um, now suppose in this part, at this part in, of the process, the requirements were refined and the story was made ready and it is placed on the sprint backlog. Well, this means we can start implementing the requirements, of course. Okay, so we have to set up the project and we have to choose an application framework. Well, we don't have to, but we could, can choose to if you want. Uh, now, suppose we chose Spring Boot, which is a popular choice, of course. Uh, so we set up our code project. We wrote the first class. It looks like this. 
And in this case, it's a one-liner, so it's convenient. And we run it for the first time to see if we think, set up things correctly, right? Now let's see what is happening. I mean, I mean, what is all this stuff? I just wrote one line of code, right? And this is what's happening. What's happening? Wow, that's insane. You know what song this, uh, this makes me think of? It's a kind of magic. It's a kind of magic. But it's not only a kind of magic. It's, it's quite intriguing, all these little things that happen. Actually, I'm quite... I'm quite pleased that all these little things happen because with introducing this one line of code, I can con concentrate on the domain logic specifically, which is, well, I guess it's the most important part from the viewpoint of the customer. So I'm kind of, this is gonna sound really weird and gross, but I'm kind of turned on, you know, by all these little things that happen through the application framework, which is the subject of the next song. Cause every little thing she does is magic Everything she do just turns me on Even though my life before was tragic Now I know my love for her goes on Do I have to tell the story Of a thousand rainy days Since we first met? Well actually that's quite accurate because I think I've been using Spring Boot for about three to four years now, so that would count up to about a thousand days. Although I can't remember if they were all rainy or not. It's a big enough umbrella, but it's always me that ends up getting wet. Cause every little thing she does is magic Everything she do just turns me on Even though my love before was tragic and Now I know my love for her goes on And also apparently Spring Boot is female according to this song So uh, glad we sorted that out Now, after the product has been set up, we can implement our domain logic. And when I'm coding, numerous songs just happen to pop up in my head. I mean, it just goes automatically. For, for example, when I'm calling a method called stop, my head immediately, immediately fills up with hammer time. Can't touch this. You know, my head does this every single time. And there's a good word for it in the English language. And that word is a reflex because it happens instantly. It's a reflex. You know, I, I can't really stop it. Oh, it's a reflex. I'm effectively a victim here. It's a reflex. Don't you feel sorry for me? I mean, I can't even turn it off. Or every time I'm doing some conditional logic in my domain uh, logic, this happens. Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy, but here's my number, so call me, maybe. Because you can never be sure if that call method will be called or not. Or, for example, when handling exceptions. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you But now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do Well, what you gotta do is handle that exception, you silly, and do it properly this time Because this is epic, dreadful stuff So, I have admitted that my brain is addicted to music and this didn't really happen overnight. It's been that way for as long as I can remember. The majority of things that happen to me immediately remind me of a song. And when that happens, I just can't stop myself from playing it and singing along. And I drive my coworkers insane from time to time. Though I su suspect that this was clear to you already. And now the question is, should I be worried about this condition, if you can call it that? Does this actually make me crazy? <laughs> Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Does that make me 
crazy possibly now i've looked into it and researched this song inception thing a bit and as it turns out everyone has this ability in some way for example what does your brain tell you after hearing this <laughs> You know, usually in a physical conference, the whole crowd goes, ice, ice, baby. Um, it's a really pity I can't, can't hear you and see your faces. But um, it turns out there are two types of people in the world. The ones who go, ice, ice, a baby. And the other half of the room would go, pressure, pushing down on me, pressing down on you, no man asked for. Under pressure, see, you have it too. So just stop laughing at me, okay? It's, it's not a condition, it is real, and everyone has it in some way. Uh, also, now you know exactly what to do when asked during a job interview if you can perform under pressure. You know, one of those standard questions, this interviewer would go, okay, so you can do Java, COBOL, Python, Lisp, and you can do Haskell. Well, that's great. We use all five languages here. Uh, also, can you perform under pressure? They would, you would just push back your chair, get up, and go, pressure! I think they simply won't be able to resist you. So let's move on to the code again. Whenever I write a switch statement, this, this often happens inside my head. I'll spread my wings and I'll learn how to fly. I'll do what it takes till I touch the sky. Oh. Make a wish, take a chance, make a change and break away. So let's assume at this point in time, your code is pretty much done and the next step is version control. Now the lyrics to the last song I was performing, it contains really inspiring stuff. In fact, I think it's perfectly fine to use as a commit message. I mean, see, make a wish, take a chance, make a change. Oh, I especially like that last one. It's fantastic, it's, it's generic, you can use it anywhere. Now, of course, after our commit has been created, we need to push it, unless you are really into merge conflicts, of course, but I'm assuming you're not. So before we are going to push our commits, let's have a brief moment of honesty here. Search yourself for a moment and ask yourself the following question. Do I have a song for this? Because I'm, I'm quite sure everyone in this virtual room has. That one song that you secretly hum each time you type git push. For a lot of people, it could be ah, push it. Ah, push it, you know, and for other people, it might be this one. Push it to the limit. limit. Past the point of no return You've reached the top but still you gotta learn how to keep it Almost everyone has a song for this step, it's, it's remarkable So the next stage will be stage 5, debugging now, Of course this is a perfect spot to face it with each other that nobody's actually perfect, right? So eventually bugs will be found in your code. And of course, the most important question is, well, what, what do you think the most important question is? Uh, maybe how many bugs are there or how are you going to fix them or how will you reproduce the situation in which the bug occurred? But I think these are all the wrong questions because when bugs are found in your code, the most important question is, what song will play inside your head when it happens, at least in my opinion? Um, well, when the user files a defect in your ticketing system, what, would, what could your most mature and responsible response be? Denial, of course. Denial, the first step of any healthy bug fixing process. And of, to be fair, we also need a bit of determination. But both responses are addressed by the next song.
They told him, don't you ever come around here Don't wanna see a face, you better disappear The fire's in the rise and the words are really clear So beat it, but you wanna be bad Just beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it No one wants to be defeated Showing now, funky, strong is your fight It doesn't matter who's wrong or right Just beat it Just beat it Now, when this bug is persistent, yeah, and denial no longer works, we need a special bug song to start the bug fixing. Yes, we do. So, without further ado, I present to you the bug song. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. When you get what you want, but not what you need. When you feel so tired because you can't sleep Stuck in reverse Lights will guide you home And ignite your bone And I will try to fix you, which is what I sing to all the bugs that I have to fix. Now, if Fix You by Coldplay is the debug song, then what would be a good debugging song, you know, when you're trying to find the problem? Funny coincidence, it's by the same band, and the song is called The Scientist. Now, these lyrics, they are so accurate, I think. In a past life, Chris Martin, lead singer of, of Coldplay, he was a software developer. In a past life, Chris Martin was a software developer because I can't think of any other explanation. These lyrics are so accurate. They have everyone's typical debugging session written all over it. Just listen. I was just guessing at numbers and figures, pulling the puzzles apart. Questions of science, Science and progress don't speak as loud as my heart. Tell me you love me, come back and haunt me. Oh, when I rise to the start, where it is running in circles, chasing our tails, coming back as we are. Nobody said it was easy. Oh, it's such a shame for us to part Nobody said it was easy No one ever said it would be so hard Here it is I'm going back to the start And oof, that happens a lot in a debugging session, right? Now, after fixing this bug I need another commit message, of course, and I typically I use the bridge from the previous song, Fix You. Here's why. Tears stream down your face. Enter the commit message. I promise you I will learn from my mistakes. Okay, so we've come to the final stage in this talk, and this is stage six, operations. So... Just imagine the stuff I recreated has been deployed to production. We've applied some monitoring tools, of course. Now, when you discover a process is stuck somehow, you need to restart it, right? And maybe you even want this to be done automatically, but for the sake of this talk, let's assume you have to do it manually. So what do you do? You just end the faulty process and start a new one, right? Um, like this. We're killing in the name of We're killing in the name of Well, sadly, sometimes ending a process is not permitted or something has gone wrong 
while trying. Uh, and then you will get this message. Um, so we're going to need a different command, sudo kill dash nine, right? Uh, which I always call a rage command because it has the sudo in it because of the dash nine, because this command really feels very good when list, while listening to hard rock or metal. And because when I need this command, I really, I get really angry. Um, not really angry at people per se, but angry at my machine, you know, just like the band name. So, and on top of that, the command fits the following per following lyrics quite perfectly. And now you do what they told you. 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 <sighs> Okay, so we're nearing the finish line now. And I, I feel like you folks deserve a word of appreciation because it seems that you have stuck with me for the last 25 minutes, which had some unconventional content in it, to say the least. So as a token of my appreciation, please accept the following musical poem. I call it For the Brave Souls. Now for the brave souls who got this far, you are the chosen ones, our valiant knights who toil away without rest to become better versions of yourselves. To you, kings and queens of men, I say this. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna run around and desert you, never gonna make you cry, never gonna say goodbye, never gonna tell a lie hurt you. I just couldn't help myself. Please forgive me. All joking aside, when I deliver good software together with my team, we have all bucks fist, customer happy. I feel on top of the world every single time. But take it in, but don't look down, because I'm on top of the world. I'm on top of the world, waiting on this for a while now. Playing my dues to the dirt. I've been waiting to smile, eh? Been holding it in for a while, eh? Take it with me if I can. Been dreaming of this since a child. I'm on top of the world. All right, now, if you would want to reach out to me, here's how to do it. Uh, if you like my technical views, there's more of that at my Twitter profile. I am at Hanotify, you can follow me there. If you like the talk, I keep a list of my speaking engagement at my uh, GitHub pages website, it's listed right there. Um, if you just like the music that you heard today, I created a Spotify playlist of all the songs I did in this talk. So, so you can listen to them while you're working next week. Uh, so there's a link to the Spotify playlist. And finally, if you want me to, want to hear me perform some other songs, you can visit my SoundCloud profile if you want or you can stick around at the spatial chat Q&A afterwards. So that's all I had for you today, folks. I want to thank you for listening. Thanks a lot. <laughs>